Hey guys, it's me Kim. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for asking. So obviously, well maybe not so obviously, I don't know what I'm going to title this video, but this is going to be a video about Steve Harvey, about Monique, about integrity, about history, and also about my boo, Stacey Abrams. I mean, she's not my boo. Maybe that's, that's inappropriate to say. I just really like her and admire her and think like we need more women like Stacey Abrams. <laughs> so anyways, I wasn't going to make a public video about this because I already talked about the Steve Harvey Monique situation a little bit on my Patreon, on the Patreon, shout out to the patrons. And on that video I called Steve Harvey a word that rhymes with boon, loon, moon, because <laughs> that's what he is. Um, and I just I just had so many frustrations, but I decided to make a public video because my friend in my head, Stacey Abrams, I saw a clip of a public lecture that she gave, um, and she just said stuff that I just thought was so, so apt, you know, so apt. Integrity is always in style. And my favorite politician gave me some thoughts. So let's watch. And in that moment, my responsibility was not to preserve my political next step. And often that's what the, the concession conversation is. It's you gotta be good so that they'll let you come back and play again. I don't care. Yeah. Right. And, and when I say I don't care, I mean it in this way. Yeah. I don't want to preserve for later by destroying now. My responsibility, again, was to tell the truth. Right. And a dear friend who asked me when I told him I was going to have to acknowledge the results, he said, are you going to concede? And I couldn't fix my mouth to say the words back to him. Mm -hmm. I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, why? And I said, because it's not true. Honestly, thank God for Stacey Abrams. In this moment, what we truly, truly need is progressive fighters. People who are going to go up against the establishment, people who are going to go up against the accepted order and tell the truth. Stacy in that clip said, I am not going to preserve later by destroying now. And it's so interesting to me because you would think that those things would be flipped, but it makes sense to me that we have this moment. We have the opportunity in this moment to call out the BS, to call out injustice. So I'm not gonna try to protect my legacy and my future ambitions by being quiet about what is obvious injustice now. What a hero. Thank you so much, Stacy, for telling the truth and shaming the devil. We know there are consequences for that and I'm just glad that she has the opportunity to hopefully make some money now. She has the opportunity to build a base, to do good work, and that she will be rewarded for that. Because usually when you go out on a limb the way that Stacy has, you get slapped down. It's Black History Month, y'all. We have been hopefully, celebrating the people who sacrificed then for now. What makes the Stacey Abrams of the world so remarkable is most of us operate from a place of fear. Like most of us in our day-to-day -day lives are scared. Whether or not you wanna admit it, you're scared. How do I know? Because of the way that you move through the world. We're worried about losing what we have. We fought hard to get the little bit that we have. We don't wanna lose it. We wanna be able to give to our children. I ain't got none, but y'all do. <laughs> you know, you, you want to be able to live comfortably, to be able to donate to the causes that you believe in, to provide for your children, to provide for your families, for us single people. And so you move accordingly. Having health insurance is very important to me. I want to keep my health insurance. I get it. I have no fear. I recognize fear. I understand that fear is what keeps us playing small. It's what keeps us playing games that were not meant for us. It's what keeps us participating in these systems that screw folks who look like us over, screw folks who maybe even have helped us over. Um, if not today, but tomorrow or, or on down the line, we are complicit because we are scared of losing those little scraps that we have. That's old news. Let's not pretend that that's a new development. I'm not. 
we know that most people are perfectly comfortable being oppressors, to be honest. They just don't want to be oppressed, <laughs> you know? You just don't want somebody have a, to have a boot on your neck, but you are okay aligning with oppressors, hiding up under oppressors. We get it. But let's be real about that and be real about the consequences of that. Everybody is not Fannie Lou Hamer. Everybody is not Ida B. Wells or Ella Baker. So when I saw that video where Steve Harvey was sitting down with Monique and ramping up on her, like really piping up on her and saw and heard his uh, white, well, really mixed. The Steve Harvey audience is mixed with women, different races of women and see them um, clapping for him and hooting for him and it's like ooh wow we're really not on, we're not aligned we are not on the same wave we are not on, in the same galaxy but people want to pretend like like we're all in the same galaxy because there still is a certain kind of clout in trying to hold on to uh, being on the side of the oppressor, hiding up under the oppressor, but you still trying to get uh, woke points. You still want woke clout, but you don't want to do woke work. That's what we're dealing with now. This man who has more money, more fame, more influence than 99% of the world set on a sh his show, his own show, brought this black woman on who has, who has suffered real hits, taken real hits, and told her that it is perfectly acceptable. In fact, it is preferable, it is necessary, it is imperative that you trade your integrity for money. He said that. Now, that doesn't make sense to me. I would think that the point of having your own show, the point of being rich and famous and influential is so that you can open up paths for people to not have to do that. So that you can do something different. I would think that if you spend your entire career trying to amass certain sorts of power, that you would want to use your power to undermine. That's, that's what I would think. But you know what? That's really not how it goes. Because when people get into a Steve Harvey place, you know what they do? They say, oh, now I got to stay here. No, now, I have to, now I have to protect this stuff. So I'm going to do what they say. I'm going to do what they say and I'm going to invite this woman on who has refused to do that and berate her in front of all these white and black women and then collect my check. Steve Harvey, according to the internet, is worth upwards of $100 million. If at this point you don't have enough so that you can say, mm, I'm not going to play that game, then you just want it. You have no problem with the game. That's your game now. That sounds like cowardice and greed to me. If you are trading money for integrity, that makes you a sellout. It's definitional, it's fine, own it. Like I said earlier, let's be honest about that. Look, I, I, I always want to be fair. I always wanna be fair. So I wanna say, if you are a marginalized person and you've been allowed to accumulate things, influence, money, power in this economy, then you've probably traded something at some point. You've probably done a little bit of dancing, done a little bit of smiling, a little soft shoe at some point, to some degree, right? To keep it, to get it, I recognize that. Or if you haven't, you have probably benefited from somebody close to you doing that. The real problem for me comes in is when you have opted for accommodationism, when you have opted for being the safe one, when you try to spin that into being something that it's not, it's not brave, it's not revolutionary, stand up in your truth. Stand up in your truth, beloved. I am fair about this because I recognize that most of us are only here because somebody said, I'm going to make it to the next day by any means necessary. I don't care what I have to do. I'm gonna make it to the next day. I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna provide for my children. I'm gonna make sure that they can go to college, etc., etc. I mean, that is the black American story, right? I'm going to make it to the next day. But I also know that there is no progress 
if everybody in our lineage said, I'm just gonna make it to the next day. I'm gonna do whatever they say so that I can make it to the next day. I'm gonna do whatever they want me to do. I'm going to accommodate them. I'm going to appease them. There is, there, we got, I am sitting here in February 2019, a free person, able to do whatever I want to do. I am able to do this because so many people said, oh no, oh no, this is not, we're not doing this. If they were only concerned about making it to the next day, about getting a little bit more scraps, then we are not here. We say we want progress. We say we value progress and sacrifice and principles, but we don't value and honor what it takes to get that. We only value people rocking the boat and being impolite and being rude and standing up for themselves when we're looking backwards. Or maybe we only value it when, when men do it because people love Colin Kaepernick, though I will say it has been crazy to see people try to criticize Kaepernick for taking a settlement. Are you kidding? If you go to work and you have a white boss right now, you cannot criticize Colin Kaepernick. If you go to work and you have to whisper white people to your black colleagues, why are you criticizing? Are you kidding me? Stop it. But generally, people are perfectly fine projecting their fears onto you. They are perfectly fine telling you to sit down and shut up because they've spent their lives sitting down and shutting up. So while we can celebrate, in theory, the Fannie Lou's, the Octavia Butler's, we can celebrate the Ella Baker's, the Septima Clark's, when it comes to, in the moment, actually the time to do stuff, people say, oh, don't rock the boat. Don't get too loud. Do it this way. That's not how they want you to do it. And it's like, do y'all, but that's not, it's not, no. Have you ever read a book? Have you watched a historical drama? That's not how it works. That's why I've always been Team Monique. Even if I have criticisms of her, I am Team Her. And yeah, it is rich people problems. You know, I've never been in a position to turn down $500,000, but that's what happens when there are different class tiers in black America. I have a uh, middle class or upper middle class black people problems. You know, somebody who has less money or less privilege than me would be like, girl, I don't care about that. Inequality looks different based on where you are societally positioned. But that doesn't mean that inequity does not exist. It doesn't mean that we should overlook it. Because if there's one thing that we should know by now, it's that you cannot out earn inequality. Every time we have a conversation about a Monique, about a Colin Kaepernick, about whomever, people do tell us where they would have stood during different historical moments. And honestly, we are right now in an important historical moment. I think maybe there's a myth that persists that in the civil rights movement that everybody was marching, that everybody was plugged in, that everybody was um, boycotting, and, and it's like, no, no, <laughs> that's not what was happening. Most people, if you read the history, most people were not active in the movement. They were not taking to the streets. They were not disrupting their lives. They were at home reading the paper. That is the status quo. So if you only care about leading an unremarkable, comfortable, safe life, that's fine. Do what you gotta do, make it to the next day. Most people are not cut out to be freedom fighters. We celebrate freedom fighters because what they do is so exceptional. Most people are not cut out for the sacrifice. They're not putting themselves on the line. In fact, I'm not, I don't consider myself to be an activist. I don't consider myself to be a freedom fighter. I am soft. I am privileged. I have no fear of sharing my honest thoughts with the public in this manner. And I don't care about the blowback or whatever, but I am not a Fannie Lou Hamer. But if you are somebody who only cares about staying comfortable, if you are somebody who just wants to live an unremarkable life, then get out of the way of the people who want to do more. I don't get why you would choose to put yourself in between somebody who is saying, 
I'm not gonna accept this. I'm not gonna take this anymore. This is not right. Why would you as a black person decide to put yourself in between Monique and the white establishment? That's what we are seeing. People are literally acting as buffers, as defense shields, as protectors of white establishment. And Steve tries to say, oh, it's just money but then he went on to say oh we're black this is the white man's so which is it steve is it just about money or do we recognize that money and whiteness and power intersect in ways that are very difficult for black people to penetrate i don't understand why you would not just choose to take your check and go look monique is not rosa parks She's not Rosa Parks. I don't think it is appropriate for us to compare Monique to any historical black woman figure. No, this woman is rich. She's still rich. <laughs> Even if she doing bad, she's still rich. But I am reminded of this beautiful documentary of Rosa Parks. This is why Rosa Parks is now one of my most favorite figures in black American history. It's by Jean Theo Harris. It's just, it's called The Rebellious Life of Rosa Parks. It is just magnificent. And I remember really distinctly reading through that biography and reading a passage where Rosa talks about what was going through her mind while she was being dragged off the bus. I think that there is a misconception that that was all planned. It wasn't planned according to Jean Theo Harris's book. According to her research, she decided she wasn't gonna get up. And then afterwards, people and um, NAACP surrounded her and decided to make her the test case. But anyway, she has talked about while she was being dragged off the bus and being, you know, harassed and brutalized, nobody got up to help no, neither the black people or the white people intervened and she talked about feeling so alone I think she might even said that that was the loneliest moment in her life while she was being dragged off the the bus in Montgomery I say that to say that um, there's this old adage you know history doesn't repeat itself but it rhymes and when Monique was talking about how all these rich famous, powerful black people, people who have more money than we can ever even imagine Oprah, Tyler Perry, Steve Harvey, that they are telling her privately, you're right. You're right, you're not wrong. And I believe her when she says that, when she says that Lee Daniels told her, mm, you're not wrong. But then got in public and chastised her. Got in public and made it a point to say, oh, I'm not with that. When you have the capability to do something and you don't, and I'm supposed to respect that. Steve was on there talking about his kids and his grandkids and whatever. You don't want to teach your grandkids that integrity is our responsibility. You know, I'm projecting. These are the values that I prize. Obviously, those are not the values that Steve Harvey prizes. Okay, that's fine. You won't be coom, be coom. Sorry, I was trying not to use that word, but <laughs> if you want to tap dance and shuffle to maintain your place, that's, I don't think that you have to do that. I don't think that you have to do that. You are choosing to do that. That is where your heart and your values lie. And thank you for letting us know. It's almost the end of Black History Month. We're gonna move into Women's History Month. We celebrate people who refuse to be frightened, who refuse to move in a scared way, but you use all your energy to tell people to be scared and to stop moving. And you know, look, when it comes to Monique, you don't have to like her attitude. You don't have to like the way she did things. You don't have to like her husband. Like I said, I have critiques. I understand the status quo. I understand what that means. I also am deeply, deeply grateful for people who choose to flip the table over. And when I see you flipping the table over, I'm not gonna say, whoa, what about this? Who's gonna pay for that table? <laughs> you know? No, that's not my place. If I see you flipping the table over, I'm saying, oh, I'm gonna mind my business. You clearly felt it was, you needed to flip that table over. Girl, go ahead and flip it. I appreciate the table flippers. I respect the table flippers because I have benefited as much from their work as I have from people who've kept their cool. We need more table flippers. More table flippers. Do that. The last thing I'll say about this is we are all socialized to side with power. Despite the fact that most of us have very little, 
we are socialized to revere power, to um, honor power, to bow down to it. If that's money, if that's fame, if that's influence. And it is weird to me, but not unexpected to see so many people reflexively siding with the, the most powerful person in the room. It happens everywhere. It happens in all sorts of communities. And so when I see people really going hard with, in this case, with the Steve Harvey or with the Lee Daniels or with the Tyler Perry's or whatever, it to me feels like when broke people rally behind Trump. Y'all are not the same. Y'all are not the same. Y'all are, your situations are not <laughs> the same. And the likelihood that your situations will be the same is very small. So I think that we should really, really think hard about who we ride for and who we go up for and if that benefits us or not. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. The bonus video up on Patreon right lie? now is me that talking about the Jesse Smollett story and why so just, I you know, having, I'm like did not make feelings. any public statements not about Jesse Smollett that's important. and why I did not make a video about Jesse Smollett. Yes, Ultimately, I'm glad that I trust my gut. I trust my gut. So anyways, I talked about that mess over there. Obviously, it's patrons only. Um, sign up. Send me an email. Leave a comment. Send me a private message if you can figure out how to do that. Buy some merch. Sign up for the email newsletter. Thank you guys so much. I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.